I'd like to just welcome everyone to our uh, opioid crisis uh, panel. Uh, joining us today, um, to my left, Father Bob Steck. He's the pastor of St. Ambrose Church in Brunswick, which runs a greater than heroin outreach effort. In April, Father Bob has asked more than 300 religious leaders across the uh, county to speak about the issue on the congregations on April 23rd. Sitting next to him, uh, Valeria Harper. She is the new chief executive officer of the Alcohol, Drug Addiction, and Mental Health Services. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, at, she's been an Adams Board employee for the last 30 years, and in this new role, she's responsible for overseeing 444 treatment beds for men and women throughout the county. Uh, next to her is Common Pleas Judge David Mattia. He helped create the Cuyahoga County's first drug court program in 2008. Um, a member of the U.S. Attorney's Heroin and Opioid Task Force. He addressed members of the U.S. Congress in Washington about the epidemic earlier this year. And last but not least, Chief Sal Rivera. Uh, he served as the police chief in Lorraine for the last 24 years. 2012, um, as the heroin epidemic was just beginning to ravage Northeast Ohio, he helped lead the effort to get Narcan in the hands of police. In 2015, the state honored him for those efforts with the Ohio Distinguished Law Enforcement Training Award. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Good to be with you. So my first experience with, with heroin in Northeast Ohio um, was back when we were doing our Rating the Suburbs uh, questionnaires. And in 2012, the city of Independence put their biggest concern as heroin. And I didn't believe it. Um, it's not the place that you'd expect it, but here we are five years later, and we know that's certainly not the case. Um, I'd just like to know from all of you um, what we've learned in the last five years and what the heroin epidemic looks like to you on the ground here in 2017. Father Bob? I, I can tell you a simple story. So I'm in Brunswick, Ohio, middle class America, and, and part of what we've been doing through the Greater Than Heroin Outreach is trying to stir up regional conversations. So back, uh, back in February, we had a room filled with, in this case, Medina County leaders, 45 of them. Long story short, three of my members in the age of 68 to 72 were walking past, they were volunteering in the other building. They're painting a room together, right? So they're walking past, they said, come in and have some lunch. They had no idea what they were coming into other than just to get lunch. They sat down. Long story short, everybody's going around introducing themselves. The first guy stands up and says, my name's Dave. I had no idea why I'm here, but now that I understood this, my grandson's an addict. The next guy stands up. My name's Steve. I was painting the other room. I came in for lunch, no idea. My son-in-law's an addict. Give me a heart attack. The third guy stands up. I had no idea. The third guy stands up and says, my name's Bubba, whatever it is. And long story short, my grandson's best friend died two weeks ago of an overdose. What does that say about his grandson, right? That story for me, among others, paints the picture of how, how deep this epidemic is gripping our region. And I think if there's anything we have or have not learned is I don't think we yet grasp the depth and the breadth of how close this is to every single one of us mm -hmm. and how it's going to take every single one of us to wrap our minds around this to walk forward. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I echo and welcome um, the scenarios and having very similar circumstances and situations as we, um, the Chief William Denahan, who is the Chief of the Alcohol and Drug, uh, Drug Addiction Board for another three days, he reminded <laughs> me this morning, <laughs> my official position is effective as of August 1st, but thank you. Um, but what we have, we were really pretty surprised around is the continued increase in the number of deaths. And while addiction has been around, we all know for a very long time, and heroin has been around for a very long time, the synthetic forms of fentanyl and the um, medical examiner, Dr. Gilson, said that he's aware of 12 different types of fentanyl, and that's just the count 20, as of 20, last 20, week. 20 yeah, analogs. yes, wow. it is. Um, it's alarming, so we can't, we don't feel as if we're ahead of this epidemic. Um, while we're constantly trying to expand services, making the array of services more creative, based on what we're hearing back from individuals in recovery, uh, hearing voices from families, 
Um, what have we learned? We need more of everything. We need to be open to new models that other states have tried with the epidemic um, fairly in its infancy stage, if you will, in terms of the addition of the fentanyl over the past three years almost. Uh, we, we really need to take a look at what works in other areas as well. Uh, one of the things that we, we um, have learned more recently in the past year is that the stigma or the perception was that this was a wealthy family, primarily Caucasian epidemic and crisis. Well, that's far from the truth in America and in particularly in Cuyahoga County with the, again, very forms in which fentanyl can be uh, distributed within the heroin um, and now in crack cocaine and now in marijuana, um, we're seeing that it certainly does not discriminate in terms of this epidemic or crisis. Uh, I'm not optimistic. Uh, I've been doing this since 2008, as you said, and um, you know, it's, being a drug court judge is like having a clinical addiction practice. I see my patients, or my defendants, once a month at least. Um, and I've been involved in the bigger picture issue here as to why people are coming to this still. Um, we are poorly equipped in this country to handle dependency. We were behind the curve uh, when this uh, public health epidemic started, and we've done very little to address how we treat dependency. Um, the people at this table have done an excellent job, but we need major changes to our uh, health care infrastructure. Uh, we need our hospitals to step up to the table and help us dig our way out of the hole that they help create by their over-prescribing practices. Uh, we need more detox centers. We need more physicians who have waivers that are enabled to provide uh, medication-assisted treatment in the form of Suboxone and Buprenorphine, scientifically shown to be the best way to help with recovery. Uh, there are only 30 doctors in Cuyahoga County who have waivers. 30. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of shameful. Chief? Well, in, in Lorraine, you know, in the last four or five years, we've just seen a really devastating impact of, of, of this epidemic, and 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 I think law enforcement and everybody in general was pretty slow to recognize what was happening. You know, for us, for me, in 2011, we had 22 overdose deaths, and at that time, it was prescription opioids, and um, and all of a sudden, in 2012, less than actually less than a year later, we had 60. And so, you know, that forced us to get together and we, we called in all of our, you know, our health department and our hospitals and everybody and had a conversation. That's eventually what led to us, uh, you know, fighting to get Narcan uh, in the hands of our police officers. Um, but for us, I, I guess I'm, I'm as disappointed as the judge is in the sense that uh, I, I don't see the medical field, which I think played a, a huge role in, in causing this d uh, dilemma. And, um, and I don't see the public policy, I don't see the funding uh, still moving in the direction that it needs to go to, to alleviate this problem. For us, it's, it's a painful thing. I come in every day and I look at reports and we're averaging sometimes three, four, five, six overdoses. You know, not all, not all fake fatalities, but, um, and, and of course, we've seen a, a large increase in everything from burglaries to breaking into cars to robberies. Um, it's not unusual for us to get calls in the middle of the day, in the middle of the morning at a fast food restaurant and find somebody overdosed in a car. Uh, we had a young, uh, young man who came home and found both his parents uh, in the garage, you know, uh, dead at the same time. And, um, you know, we've had some people driving and, and, and cause accidents and by the time we get to them they've overdosed, you know, and they have children in the back seat of the car. So it, it's, it's a really... It's an epidemic that touches us all, and I guess I'm just frustrated by the fact that it doesn't seem to me to be internalized by most of our citizens. Right. And it seems like we've compartmentalized our lives, and you know we're we're able to kind of watch that on the news, but that's them, you know, um, like we've done with so many other issues. And um, and I guess I just hope that someday, you know, everybody can understand these are human beings who life has value and that we all need to come together and put our resources. 
Can I piggyback? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the chief and his department and departments like his who use Narcan uh, should be praised. Mm -hmm. uh, we're lucky in Cuyahoga County, uh, most of our police departments have embraced it. Uh, and uh, there comes a compassion fatigue, though, with uh, police officers who keep narcan in the same right. people. Uh, and the reason that they have to keep narcan in the same people is people don't understand you know, what happens when you get narcan. You, you go into a form of withdrawal. So the dependent person gets thrown in withdrawal and his brain is telling him to go back out and use to alleviate that dope sickness feeling. If we had an infrastructure where the Lorraine police can take them to the ER that they are anyway, where there's a medical professional on hand who could talk to them about administering them buprenorphine, that would control those withdrawal symptoms. Their brain would stop screaming for heroin, and then they could focus on whether, you know, is this the point in time I want to get clean? We have to promote harm reduction uh, strategies uh, like they use uh, with police and Narcan. Um, and we, but we have to build the infrastructure that the, mm -hmm. the well-meaning police can hand off their um, overdoses to, to help them turn the corner towards recovery.